With all the boss focus coming in Siege of the Atlas, it makes sense to start a character that can dish out the damage while keeping at a safe distance. Ice Trap is an immensely powerful and budget-friendly league starter, with huge room for min-maxing. Welcome to Badger's Ice Trap Saboteur. Welcome! It's your friendly neighborhood Badger here, and I'm back to present my first build guide of 3.17, and my personal league starter pick. Ice Trap has been a very strong skill for quite a while now, and with some tasty buffs coming in 3.17, it moves it from respectably good to irresponsibly good. Though we're seeing some nerfs to Cluster Traps, a very strong support for any trap build, the support Swift Assembly escaped any sort of damage nerf, meaning we can take full advantage of the almost 50% damage buff to Ice Trap in this patch. With defenses such as 20,000 plus evasion, full spell suppression, freezing and chilling, ghost shroud recovery, blind, shock and ignite immune, and much more on a shoestring budget, the Ice Trap Saboteur is perfect for those who want a smooth leak start to farm your Lightning Tendrils build. <laughs> Hell, that's what I'm doing. Right off the bat, I do want to acknowledge a few things. First, traps are not for everyone. It's a playstyle that takes some getting used to, so if you've never played traps before, consider this. Secondly, always play what you think will be fun for your playstyle, not something some other random Path of Exile creator says will be OP. This guide is here for those who want to try something solid, proven, and effective. Lastly, the footage you're seeing today is on a stupidly jank thrown together character on standard, obviously without the buffs coming through, and with close to half the damage and survivability of what is shown in my budget POB, clearing T14 to 16 red maps. Speaking of resources, the path of building, complete with all the notes and leveling trees, is down below in the description. Open it up to follow along. Alright, let's get freezing. First of all, let's talk about Ice Trap and how the gameplay actually functions with a skill like this. Especially if you've never played a trap build before, there's a couple of things I'm going to mention here, and then we're going to go in depth with all of the path of building tree and the gear choices that you're going to be making. First of all, Ice Trap is a cold spell skill, and it throws a trap on the ground. If an enemy walks over that trap, or if you throw it underneath an enemy, it will proc, dealing the Ice Trap damage, and all of the traps that you do throw down will all trigger at the same time. So we can just quickly have a look at how Ice Trap works right here. You throw it down on the ground, and after a time it will trigger on its own, or an enemy will walk over it and it will trigger. Now I do have an MTX on right now that's like a Frost Flower MTX, but let me take that off so you can see exactly how Ice Trap works and looks just by itself. So this is two ice traps on the ground right now and they explode and it looks quite pretty in my opinion. Some great things about ice trap is it is a cold skill. This means you can chill and freeze with it. On a build like this, we're going crit, meaning that most trash monsters, most white or blue mobs, even rare mobs, we're going to be freezing, meaning it's a great defensive layer for us. Another great thing about traps is you can pre-stack traps on the ground. I can throw a ton of different traps on the ground, and I can get up to 21 to 22 uh, traps on the ground, and then they'll all explode, and they'll deal massive burst damage. Now this is good for bosses that have a wind-up time, as they're, you know, maybe coming out of the ground, or they're prepping, or they're talking through the story or something like that. Uh, you can prep this. Now, a lot of bosses in the game, especially in the end game, do have damage, redu damage reduction when they first, you know, spawn, so it does mean that you know, you're not going to be dealing the full damage, but the burst damage is definitely there. This is really important coming into Arch Nemesis, the challenge league of 3.17, meaning that with the Arch Nemesis mobs, we can actually pre-stack all of our traps right here, and then we can break open the mob, and then it will deal the full damage, burst damage right there as well. And after that, we can keep our sustained damage going. We're going to be supplementing our damage first with Bear Trap, Bear Trap is a trap that's thrown down, and if Bear Trap procs on an enemy, it both slows their movement speed or roots them, depending on what type of enemy they are, and it also means that uh, enemies will take 25% increased damage from trap or mine hits during the duration that it lasts, which is 3 seconds. So it's all about throwing the trap down, throwing our Frost Bomb down to be able to apply exposure, and to be able to apply a bunch more damage, cold damage taken through uh, Unbound Elements and Bone Chill and then using Frostbite as well. So in a normal POB, your Bear Trap is going to be linked with Hextouch Frostbite. It's probably going to be the best way to go about it. But there are other ways that you can work around this as well with Bear Trap. So meaning you just Bear Trap, you Frost Bomb, and then you throw all your traps down around. You can dash around if you want to, uh, but you can also definitely use Flame Dash as the movement that you probably want to be using with all of this. And that's basically how the gameplay goes. 
Um, I will run some other gameplay just in the background here as well. Uh, of how it actually looks during mapping, but you saw that in the intro as well. Uh, there's not really too much to talk about, but there is one thing that I'll quickly mention, and I'll also talk over this once we actually talk about uh, the gear choices and the passive skill tree choices as well. A tree will either look like this right here with Explosives Expert, Perfect Crime, Pyromaniac, or Chain Reaction, but in my opinion, I don't think Chain Reaction is needed, especially if you use a Carcass Jack with the extra AoE. Chain Reaction, the when your traps trigger, your nearby traps also trigger, used to be vitally important for trap builds, but with the immense amount of trap trigger radius on the tree, this is no longer needed, and in fact Born in the Shadows is much better, especially for defenses. In my opinion, you can start with your first Uberlab being Chain Reaction, but if you do migrate to a Carcass Jack, I would definitely choose uh, Born in the Shadows over Chain Reaction. Uh, especially because we're not using any cooldown recovery rate for throwing traps, Chain Reaction's not really that needed anymore. So just a very small thing to talk about right there. I'll talk about the passive skill tree section in a moment once we get through all the budget gear, but that's all I really have to say about Ice Trap. Right on the end of this, Ice Trap is not the only trap that is getting buffed. Lightning Trap and Explosive Trap are all getting buffed as well. Fire Trap is too, but it's a bit of a different playstyle and you want a totally different build for that. If you want the best single target that you can have, Explosive Trap with Conversion is probably the best uh, option, uh, but it has the worst clear. Ice Trap is in the middle with not the best DPS and not the best clear, but a good uh, all round of both. If you want the best clear and probably the worst single target, Lightning Trap is the skill that you do want to play right there. Without further ado, let's jump into the passive skill tree. Sorry, no, not the passive skill tree yet. We're going to be talking about the budget gear and links, and then some endgame options, and then the passive skill tree right after that. Let's get into it. Time to talk about the budget gear, and then the links that are following there as well. Now when I say budget, I really do mean budget with this. There's a couple of things that you can buy on day one or day two that will improve your damage, but for the most part, this whole build guide is just about starting. Any updates that I make, because I will be playing this build, any updates that I make to this build will be coming through with future videos, but right now I'm going to be talking mainly about the budget and then some choice upgrades you're going to be making. So first of all, let's get right into that. The gear itself is quite straightforward. You do see a couple of uniques here, but they're not needed. There is a Tabula Rasa, but that's just for an early 6 link, and they're relatively easy to farm early. It's going to be around 20 Chaos to 30 Chaos on day 1 to buy, and, you know, that can be farmed up in an hour or two in early maps. Another choice unique is Divinarius. Now, Divinarius might spike in price on the first day or two, but then it probably should jump down. Now, being a build guide and being a creator, I do know that I do have some sort of influence releasing a build guide like this. So just be aware that this might spike in price a little bit more than it usually does. However, it's 100% not needed. Something as simple as a, a Void Scepter with cold damage to spells, a global crit multi, or a plus level to all cold skill gems is going to be just a similar. This can also be a wand, this can also be a dagger, you can even uh, get some other stuff on there uh, that's going to be really, really nice. So you can craft any of the crit multi or the cold damage to spells on there. We are also getting a buff. It's also important to keep in mind that everything that you see over on the side here is the pre-buffed ice trap uh, with the pre-buffed uh, community fork, the POB that's coming out. Once the POB does actually update, I will be releasing a new POB that will go directly down below in the description. So always jump back here and just make sure that you're, you've are you got the accurate one once POB does update. However, even just clicking the update button should update things to the new values for you. There's nothing changing on the tree with what we're using right here. Uh, so in terms of weapon, that's basically all that you want to use. You could use two Void Scepters, or you could use a Shield. Shield is definitely a lot more defense, but something just with life and plus level to all cold spell skill gems is really all you need. The helmet itself, you do want to get a helmet that's just got good resistances, good life, and if you want the enchant, it's Ice Trap Damage Penetrates 10%. Cold Res is the best enchant for you, so you could look for a, an early uh, grab up of one of those. Tabula Rasa, as I said, is a really good chess piece. If you don't have a Tabula Rasa, uh, any sort of 5-link evasion chest or evasion slash energy shield or even energy shield ch uh, chest with life is going to be totally fine for you. As I said, Carcass Jack is a really good upgrade, giving you the area of effect and the area damage plus extra gore, which is well, no, not needed whatsoever. Uh, but it's a really, really nice choice right there. Another one for survivability is definitely going to be, um, uh, what's the trap one called? Tinker Skin. Tinker Skin is really good for 
uh, survivability. But do remember that if you are using Tinker Skin, you don't really want to be using Chain Reaction because the life and ES on Trap Trigger only procs once if you're using Chain Reaction. If you're not using Chain Reaction, it procs a ton of time. So way more survivability without Chain Reaction if you're using Tinker Skin. So just keep that one in mind. Gloves, any sort of evasion gloves with just life and fire res. Some suppressing spell damage on there as well is really uh, nice if you can grab that. Some boots with suppressed spell damage, movement speed, life and res, all you need. Uh, an amulet, plus one cold to uh, a cold skill gems amulet is uh, really, really nice because you can get this on base amulets now. And then some crit multi and life there as well. Um, that's all you really need. The uh, allocation itself, the... Um, uh, what do you call it? The anointment. Arcane potency is a really, really strong anointment, and it's relatively cheap right there as well. Arcane potency. In terms of the rings, if you're just looking for life resistances, totally, totally fine. That physical damage to converted to cold damage, not needed whatsoever. You don't need to convert anything. Uh, and then you can just use, you know, both rings just like that. And then, you know, you just need a little bit of strength just to cap out all of the uh, strength requirements from your gear. Uh, the only cluster jewel that I really say is relatively important is a medium cluster jewel with arcane pyrotechnics and guerrilla tactics. The one that's really important is the arcane pyrotechnics, and the guerrilla tactics is not as important right there. So you can just get cluster jewel with arcane pyrotechnics and nothing else, that's totally fine. And then the rest right here, we've just got two stat jewels with spell damage and max life. Basically all you need. Uh, in terms of the skills themselves, the main link is Ice Trap. Now I'm going to go over a bunch of different things with Ice Trap because it's relatively important to talk about a couple of these things. Ice Trap is going to be fairly mana hungry. Now we are sitting on 11% mana reserved uh, with you know 77 to 80 uh, mana right here and a mana cost of 46. Now there's a couple of options if this is feeling bad for you. It's fairly mandatory in the early game to be using a... Um, wherever it is, no, there shouldn't be two of these, an Enduring Eternal Mana Flask. Uh, with an Enduring Eternal Mana Flask and with the uh, nodes on the tree uh, of these, oh, they're not actually on the tree right uh, right now, but these uh, nodes right here of the Replenishing Remedies and the Mana Flask gain, you'll have no mana problems just as long as you're not absolutely spamming it. However, if you do feel that you, you really don't want to be using mana, you can use Life Tap instead of either Cold Pen or Increased uh, Critical Strikes right here. So you can do something like this, and you can use Life Tap, or you can use Inspiration instead of Increased Critical Strikes. You will obviously be losing some damage. However, uh, you are still going to be... Um, you're going to be totally fine on the mana side of things. You can see here, this goes down to a uh, mana cost of 30, which is going to be way, way, way better. And obviously Life Tap means you're just going to be using your life right here instead. Now, using your life, you are going to be, you know, chunking a little bit of your life, so you probably want to, on the tree, you want to be using a mastery uh, in one of the uh, trap masteries, such as, instead of traps cannot be damaged, you want to be using the recover 30 life when your traps triggered by an enemy. That's uh, probably what you want to be using right there to mitigate the uh, life tap right there. But yeah, there's a couple of choices as you can see. Now, I do really want to talk about Swift Assembly because Swift Assembly is not getting nerfed. Cluster traps and uh, multi traps is getting nerfed quite a lot. Now, Swift Assembly is not as good as something like Cluster Traps. You're not going to be throwing as many traps. So your uh, your sustained damage is not going to be... Well, it probably will be the same with the nerfs. However, what I will say on bosses, it's probably going to be okay if you use Divergent Cluster Traps instead of Swift Assembly. Now, I'm still going to be playing around with this, but Divergent Cluster Traps mean that they all get thrown in a smaller area, meaning there's a lot more shotgunning and overlapping happening there, meaning that you're probably 100% guaranteed to be procking all of your traps on every single boss that you fight. However, Swift Assembly is still going to be doing uh, very, very decent damage, and in terms of burst damage, Swift Assembly is going to have the most burst damage possible uh, out of any of the supports for your traps. Uh, so that's all I really have to say on that one right there. Uh, in terms of your aura setup, it's Hatred, Summon Skitterbots, and Grace. And then you're going to be linking Infernal Legion with your Summon Skitterbots. Now this is a small little tech that's actually really important to Saboteur. Infernal Legion is only a 120% cost and reservation multiplier on Summon Skitterbots, and it won't affect Grace or Hatred right here. And what it means is that with the Explosives Expert, your uh, Skitterbots are going to be shocking enemies, they're going to be chilling enemies, you're going to be doing that anyway, and they're also going to be burning enemies, meaning that 
all the time, you have Explosives Expert always up. It's really, really strong. So for a small uh, mana reservation multiplier on Infernal Legion right here for summon Skitterbots, you've always got your crit multi, crit chance, and damage penetration from Explosives Expert, and you don't need flat fire damage anywhere on your gear. However, if you do have even one to two flat fire damage to spells on your gear anywhere, you can remove Infernal Legion because you will always be burning enemies. Uh, you'll be igniting enemies with all of your crits. So if you've got any sort of flat fire damage, you don't need to worry about this. However, if you don't have flat fire damage, use Infernal Legion. The first setup right here is Frostbite, Bear Trap, and Hex Touch. You just want to be using this to be applying your Bear Trap and your Frostbite. And then the second one right here is your Frost Bomb, Bone Chill, Unbound Elements, and then with Arcanus Brand, so it's always proccing on the enemies. In your last uh, four link, you've got Cast When Damage Taken level three, Immortal Call level five, Increased Duration, and uh, Summon Chaos uh, Golem level five, just for an extra 3% physical damage reduction. If you want more damage, you can switch this to a Fire Golem level five right there as well. And obviously, I'm very sorry, I forgot to put the movement right here, but Flame Dash is gonna be your best movement right here. Flame Dash and Faster Casting is probably just the best setup right here. And then lastly, you could put a portal in, in uh, your last link right there if you would like to. But Flame Dash, in my opinion, is just gonna be the best that you can use here. You can use Frost Blink if you want, if you wanna be all thematic, but I think Flame Dash is uh, better just because of the amount of charges you get with it. That's basically all I really have to talk about right here on the gear and passive, uh, sorry, gear and links choices. Just lastly, I do wanna talk on some upgrades that you're going to be making. Now, first of all, there's a few ways that you can take this build. First of all, you can take it into Brittle. Brittle is going to be changing your freezes and your chills into Brittle, which is going to be increasing your critical strike chance, meaning you're always going to have a 100% crit strike chance and you can drop something like a Diamond Flask. That's a great way to move. Uh, and you can do uh, that through things like Leadership's Price, or you can use the Secrets of Suffering Jewel. There's a few ways that you can uh, get Brittle. There's even uh, a base type, a uh, Scepter base type, I think, that you can apply Brittle with. Some other things that are really, really important are getting uh, damage penetration if you haven't killed recently or crit strike chance if you haven't killed recently as an enchant on your boots. They're both really strong because you never actually kill. Your traps kill. So as long as you're not killing with dot damage or anything like that, that's going to be 100% always up, which is really, really strong. Uh, or if you, I think it's also if you haven't crit uh, recently, which, you know, you're not going to be critting, which is really, really nice. Unless you are proccing down your uh you know your um your frost bomb can crit so so watch out for that some other big things are just going to be uh crit chance to spells on a crafted chest or crit chance to spells on uh, gloves or anything like that and then just stacking flat damage um uh, ice trap is getting a really really nice flat damage to spells buff to it so that's going to be really strong a really nice for example void scepter that you can look for is something like this one Cold damage to spells, global crit multi, level of all spell skill gems, level of all cold spell skill gems, and then some trap throwing speed right there as well to make it even faster as you're throwing your uh, uh, your skill gems. Uh, your, <laughs> your skill gems? Your ice traps. Uh, forgive me. Uh, but yeah, Divinarius, really, really good budget. Very early Void Scepter, also really good budget. You can double up on the Void Scepters if you want for some more damage, but you don't need to. Apart from that... Uh, it's pretty much just increasing your critical strike multi, increasing your jewels, getting the jewels with three or two crit strike multi uh, uh, stats on them and some life. And then, yeah, that's that's basically it. This will scale and scale, and I'll release some more information of how I'm scaling it as this progresses. But without further ado, let's talk about the passive skill tree. So let's talk about the passive skill tree, shall we? First, we're gonna focus on the ascendancy points themselves, and then we're gonna talk about potential ascendancies in Raider, and then I'll talk about the tree as well. So first of all, Saboteur is the way to go. It's got so much damage and so much defense packed into such a small bundle, and we're gonna talk through all of those choices right here. First of all, let's talk about the first ascendancy point. I like to take perfect crime first. Thank you for the uh, offline follow, Storm333 official. I really appreciate that. Perfect Crime is really strong, especially if you're stacking a ton of traps on the ground. You gain 10% increased damage for each trap that's on the ground, which with 22 traps for full burst, that's a lot on the ground right there. You also get 25% chance for traps to trigger an additional time. Now, this is 
basically a 25% more multi right there uh, because it's the only uh, amount of chance for traps to trigger an additional time that we have. So it's 25% more multi from what you're actually seeing right here. And obviously remember once again, uh, well, this is only 40 points on the tree right here. And this is also the, well, we want to be looking at the average hit, but this is pre-buff, so keep that in mind. And then lastly, the 25% reduced cost of skills that throws traps is very important, especially during the leveling process as well. I'll talk about that during the leveling section, but uh, the leveling process is going to be a little bit mana hungry, but there are some things that you can work around right there for that. Talking about the second ascendancy point right here, um, uh, we want to pick Pyromaniac. This is my favorite just because it's survivability and by this point, second ascendancy, you're not really going to be needing more damage. If you do feel like you want more damage, you can go Explosive Expert, but you really don't need it. My third ascendancy point that I really like to take is definitely Explosive Expert. And once again, if you did take this for your second, you want to take Pyromaniac. And then lastly, your fourth ascendancy is Born in the Shadows. Now, as I said, you can definitely take Chain Reaction if you want, but in my opinion, it's not needed. The AoE might be a little bit lacking without it, uh, but from my uh, small testing, it's actually not too much of an issue and you're going to be hitting 95% of your traps anyway on most bosses in the game. However, this is totally a choice up to you, defensive or offensive. you got to really remember those two choices right there. Now, very quickly, just in terms of Raider, it does have a couple of things going for it, but there's a couple of things that you do really need to know about Raider. Raider is very much the ascendancy that you're going to be wanting to use the uh, combination of Tinker Skin and Slave Driver's Hands. Slave Driver's Hands is unique. It's going to be scaling your cast speed for your trap throwing speed, and that's the reason that you pick Raider. Without Slave Driver's Hands, Raider is not really an option. However, Raider is really nice for your Onslaught and your increased Onslaught effect for the Slave Driver's Hand and uh, cast speed into trap throwing speed if you want, as well as getting your uh, uh, Cold Fire and Lightning Exposure near your enemies, chance to avoid animals while phasing, and then a bunch of chance to suppress spell damage with phasing right here as well. So it's a very fast map clearer, um, but the boss damage is definitely going to be stronger on Saboteur anyway, in my opinion. So I'll just quickly, you know, mention Raider. And, you know, it's basically the same tree, you just move a couple of things around right here. The tree itself, let's quickly talk about that. The tree is relatively condensed over to the uh, Trickster and Raider side right here, well, the Shadow, Shadow and Ranger side, I should say. Uh, but basically, this is how I would do the tree. There's a couple of different options that I will talk about, especially during the leveling. But uh, you're going to be picking up a couple of Frenzy Charges and mostly just making sure that you do pick up these nice Trap Masteries and these Spell Suppression Masteries right here to get a very, very healthy amount of uh, Spell Suppression. So this is 100 points and the end game tree is just a little bit further like this, picking up these Flask Masteries, the Cluster Jewel itself, and some extra life over here. Just talking through the actual leveling process itself, there's a small respec that I would say that is going on, but you can definitely do without the respec as well. First of all, I like to come straight out of here uh, and pick up your trickery into your assassination and saboteur. Blood Siphon, Blood Siphon's probably first, but then rushing down for Master Sapper and then picking up the Summon Skitterbot's increased mana reservation efficiency right here. Going into the 40 points, that your first ascendancy will happen here. And then you want to come up here, you want to pick up life, and then the second trap mastery. Your damage is going to be absolutely popping right now. Now, uh, you can come through here and pick up all of this trap mastery right here as, as well, in the evasion and energy shield and the ghost dance for your 60 points. Um, but you can also, if you want to, respec a little bit. Uh, well, not that node right there. Sorry, respec a little bit and instead uh, just, you know, two points here, respec two points here. Super, super easy. It depends on uh, what you want to do right there. For 80 points, you're going to be looking at something like this. You're going to start to pick up your uh, Frenzy and Power Charges. You're going to be picking up your Crit, picking up Herbalism, uh, and then, yeah, your Mana Reservation and all through here. And then the last little bits, very self-explanatory, just filling out the rest of the Evasion, the Jewel Sockets, and everything like that. And then the end game tree, as I said, just looks very much like this. If we're talking about uh, bandits and pantheon, as a league starter, a leer is probably the best choice for helping the bandits. You can choose to kill all bandits, but the choice is basically a leer or kill all bandits. A is helping in three regards, your mana region, your crit multi, and your resists. I really think that a is definitely the way to go. In terms of pantheons, because we're immune to shock and ignite, the only real thing for the major pantheon is soul of the brine king, I feel. It's going to be very, very strong for uh, keeping you away from being frozen and uh, being stunned, especially if you upgrade everything. And for a miner, I really like soul of Ralakesh to just help with your bleeding and physical damage over time right there. So just keep that in mind. Uh, but yeah, that's all I really have to say on that front. 
right here uh, with uh, all of this. Now we're gonna talk about the leveling process itself. So let's move over to that. Leveling on this build is really straightforward. And uh, I'm really trying to upgrade my build guides a little bit. And one of the ways I'm doing that is writing some really nice notes for you in the notes section of Path of Building. So right off the bat, you've got everything you need to know for early leveling right here until it becomes really self-explanatory. I've got a couple of different things that I will talk about. First of all, in Act 1, until level 12, you can either level with Stormblast Mines or you can level with Explosive Trap. Stormblast Mines is my pick, but if you want to level the traps the whole way, Explosive Trap is the other pick that you can do. But right before we talk about that, there's just some general notes right up the top. Uh, once again, talking about chain reaction in the build. Just remember to keep that in mind about the difference between chain reaction and uh, explosives experts or bone, uh, born in the shadows right there if you do want that. So first of all, in Act 1, you can start with classic Orb of Storms and Stormblast Mine. And uh, if you're doing that, at level 2, Stormblast Mines with Chance to Poison, Stormblast Mines into Swift Assembly and Orb of Storms Arcane Surge. And then you can pick up Dash or Frostblink for movement and pick up Bear Trap for later once you swap to traps. Now, always important to remember your wand recipes. Your wand recipes are very important. At level 8, you can do a white wand recipe with Topaz or Sapphire white rings, alterations and magic wands. Sell them to the vendor, you get cold or lightning damage wands right there. You can do a second one at level 14 and you can do a third one at level 20. The third one at level 20 is really vital, and the first and second are not as important, but if you do have the currency, if you do have alterations, make sure that you're picking up all rares and selling them ID'd for alteration shards. This is going to mean that you're going to get that early uh, damage that's going to be really important. Uh, coming into Brutus, you probably want at least one craft for this to feel nice. Explosive Trap right here is basically the same uh, as Stormblast Mines, but just a little bit of a different pickup right here. But at level 12, you're going to be switching to Lightning Trap. Lightning Trap's going to carry you, carry you from level 12 all the way to level 28, and it's going to be very, very strong because of all the buffs. You are going to be picking up Clarity for mana, and you're going to be moving into Lightning Trap, added Cold Damage and Swift Assembly, and then in another 3 link, Orb of Storms, Arcane Surge, and added Lightning Damage. Now keep in mind in Act 2, the monsters are getting buffed. Uh, so I don't know exactly how that's going to be, but just keep that in mind. However, at level 16, you want to pick up Summon Skitterbots. You probably don't want to be running too much more on your Reservation and your Mana, apart from Clarity and Summon Skitterbots, just because uh, it is a little bit Mana hungry, the uh, Lightning Trap and Ice Trap. At level 20, you want to make sure that you get your Double Wand upgrade. By this point, you should have two Alterations, two Magic Wands, and you can craft two rare sapphire rings. You can use essences that you found up until this point on the sapphire rings, sell all of that to the vendor, and you get two cold damage wands. If you do this, you're basically set for life right here. After you kill, uh, oh not Fiddle sorry, after you kill Weaver, uh, you want to pick up Trap and Mind Damage, and then your three link is going to look like Lightning Trap, Trap and Mind Damage, Swift Assembly. In Act 3, after level 24, you're going to be picking up Hatred and Frostbite, and you should hopefully be able to fit Hatred onto your Mana Reservation now if you do have all the Mana Reservation on the tree. If you don't, don't sock it in ha uh, Hatred just yet, but pick up Frostbite. At level 28, after killing Gravicious, you want to be using Ice Trap. If you have a 4-link, it's Ice Trap, Swift Assembly, Added Cold Damage, and Trap and Mind Damage. If you don't have the 4-link, just drop Trap and Mind Damage and use Added Cold, Swift Assembly, and Ice Trap right here. At level 31, you want to pick up Charge Traps after you do the Library, and you can pick up Life Tap if you're having mana problems. And your four links going to look like Ice Trap, Swift Assembly, Charge Traps, and Trap and Mind Damage. And if you're having problems with your mana, swap Trap and Mind Damage for Life Trap right here. From this point, it's super straightforward in blasting through and upgrading. Uh, remember to keep cap resistances and pick up other skill gems based on the skill sections of the POB. Remember, this is all in the notes section on this POB right here. So remember to click onto here uh, for anything that you do need uh, as you're uh, zooming through. So keep that all in mind. Uh, that's all I have to say on, you know, my, my Ice Trapper right here. I hope you enjoy it. If you do play it, feel free to come by twitch.tv slash thisisbadger. Jump in, ask any questions whatsoever. I'm more than happy to help because I'll be league starting this one right here and I'll be pushing this right into the end game. Uh, yeah, that's all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to hit the sub button and ring that bell for all notifications of anything else coming. And until next time, Badger is out.